Hey everybody, welcome back to the R20 series. This is episode 4 where we cover receivers. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Free Sky receiver line, then we're going to get into registering and binding a receiver, and finally talking about telemetry. So let's get started. The FR Sky receiver line is huge. It's a very large ecosystem, and nearly all the receivers we're talking about have telemetry. They're highly affordable, and they have exceptional link qualities about them. All of the newer FR Sky receivers are 24 channels, and our older ones, the vast majority of them, are 16 channels. Start off with the tandem line. It's signified by TD, so TDR10, TDR18. These are 2.4 gigahertz FSK receivers and 900 megahertz. They're actually two different receivers in the same package. They have, we have one that is a TDMX that's S bus, F bus out only. That's six to 18 PWN channels for the ones that uh, hook up to our planes. And our line is duplicated with the S receiver. So we have a TDR10, we'll also have a TDSR10. What does that S stand for? It stands for stabilization. It is the best link in the industry. There's nothing else quite like this when it comes to having something that works with both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz. Proven time and time again, it works flawlessly. It's a great receiver line. And these receivers work with the Tandem and Tandem Pro transmitters only. The next one is the twin TW receivers. These are 2.4 gigahertz FSK and 2.4 gigahertz LoRa or long range. These are fairly new. We have the TW MX, which is the S bus F bus version of the receiver, but the ones we care about are 6 to 12 PWM channels. They're small in size and they have smaller antennas. Because of this, they work well on things like drones and gliders, and also for things like warbirds, which may have older servos, which may not play well with the 900 megahertz telemetry on the tandem line. These are available for all twin transmitters, such as the X14 and the twin X Lite S. But if you have a tandem transmitter like the X18 or X20, you can get it at what's called the Tandem Twin Light Pro. Actually, it's called the Twin Light Pro module. And um, you can put that on the back of your transmitter and you can work with these twin receivers. The Archer Plus line, now this is going to get confusing because we have two lines named Archer. So the most current one is called the Archer Plus line. This is 2.4 gigahertz FSK only. And FSK is similar to what you find in Spectrum and Futaba and um, all sorts of other lines. We have 6 to 12 PWM channels on these. And there's a ton of options. They work with all FR Sky transmitters, so with the tandem transmitters, the twin transmitters, even the old transmitters from the Tyrannus line, the Horus line, they'll work with these. But you have to have those transmitters working on ACCST V2. And speaking of older and yet still viable Free Sky receivers, we're going to talk about the Archer line, not the Archer Plus, but the Archer line. That's an access based receivers. Those are 24 channels. Then we have the ACCST D16 based receivers. Here's an example one in the corner here. It's the X8R. This thing is still made by us. It is beloved. It is a great receiver. Um, however, they only work with 16 channels, and that's an 8 PWM channel receiver. It will work with all FR Sky transmitters. And once again, if you're working with this, you have to update it to ACCST V2 firmware. So that's usually the first thing we, we do when we get these receivers and just make sure that they work with the newest firmware. Now let's move on to registering and binding your receiver. So now that we're done with the ecosystem for FreeSky receivers, let's get into registering and binding your receiver. And let's talk about where you find this information at, what you do, what the steps are, and then we'll finally touch on telemetry at the very end. So, first thing we want to do is hit the airplane icon and we can go to the RF section. 
typically when you have a new transmitter it will not have a fancy name like this it would just have a bunch of random letters and numbers if you have not registered and bound a receiver at, up to this point you can go in and you can give it a fancy name by selecting here and hitting the backspace and updating it which is great if you already have registered and bound the receiver if you do change that then all of the receivers that you registered and bound will have to be re-registered and rebound with this new passphrase the owner registration id is a passphrase you can see we also have two different options external module which are modules that fit on the back of your transmitter that work with perhaps third-party protocols or different things we're not going to work with that we're going to use what's called a tdr10 receiver it's a tandem receiver and the built-in internal module and the built-in uh, antennas for this module are perfectly fine for everything that i want to do and for most line of sight flying they're beyond exceptional so let's just use that we're going to press this down arrow we're going to turn the state from off to on i'm going to switch it because i told you i'm using a tandem receiver so i go to the td mode and we're going to go down to here the channel range is 1 through 16 even though i told you you can get up to 24 channels if you want 24 channels all you have to do is click it and get 24 channels since the receiver i'm working with only uses 10 channels even 16 channels is a bit overkill so 24 means you're putting out an extra frames that do absolutely nothing for you so in this particular example we'll just stick with 1 through 16 hit return and I'm using all internal antennas now as far as power is concerned a lot of people I've heard a lot of different things here I've had people say well I have an expensive plane and therefore I want as most power as possible so they put out 500 milliwatts that is swamping everyone else in the field with your power uh, when it comes to 900 megahertz so to be a good citizen I highly recommend that 25 milliwatts is about the most you'd want to use for line of sight flying I use 25 milliwatts for line of sight flying I've used it for years it works great you will not have a problem with it now we're going to jump into the registration process so uh, back in the well nowadays when I go assign myself to a hotel I will go through and I will fill out the registration process online I tell them how many days I want to stay there I want to tell them if I have anyone else with me if I have any pets that type of thing and so all this information is shared with the hotel and that is similar to what happens with the registration process on the transmitter what happens is there's information that the transmitter shares with the receiver and there's information the receiver shares with the transmitter so what we have to do is we hit the register button but before we do that i will let you know that you have to depress the registration key or registration button it's on the top of your receiver most likely in most situations and sometimes they're hard to find because they're so well hidden but there's usually a little spot you depress and you're supposed to push it in as you power it on so what you do is first you hit the register you first hit this and then you after that starts it will start saying register register it doesn't do that in this example and then what you do is you power on your receiver as you depress the registration button so when you do that what will happen is after a second or two you'll see that this will light up and it will say here's that passphrase I'm sharing this with the receiver and the receiver shares information back to the transmitter such as what it is if this was a TDR 10 it would say TDR 10 right here you hit register and after a second says registration okay you say okay now for as far as the receiver is concerned typically sometimes you'll select this and you have to go down to where it says bind and sometimes it just goes right into bind in this example it goes right into bind and when you bind all you have to do is plug the receiver in now 
what happens is the transmitter and receiver already know who each other are. So kind of like when you went to the registration process at the hotel, you know who each other are. When you get to the hotel, all they do is they assign a room to you and give you keys, right? It should be a fairly straightforward process. So that's like the buying process. When you walk in there and spend a couple minutes, show them your ID, put down a credit card for incidentals, you're usually at the front desk for just a few minutes. And then they give you hotel keys, or uh, your room key, I should say. And so you select it, it would say TDR10. And what happens is if for some reason you make a new model, you do not need to go in and re-register because the transmitter and, and receiver already know who each other are. All you would have to do is just register it. The, the, I mean, sorry, all you have to do is just bind it. The bind process is a very fast, all you have to do is just plug it in, hit bind first, plug in your plane and like I showed you before, it pops right up with the name of the receiver and you're good to go. Uh, and so that's all there is to that. And then we're going to get into briefly talking about telemetry. So again, you hit the airplane icon and you go to the next page. You can swipe over to the next page. We're going to find telemetry. It's off. I'm going to turn it on. And, and this is a demo version of telemetry. Usually you don't have so many options. But what happens is telemetry is a way of the receiver talking back to the transmitter. There's a lot more information that's shared from the transmitter to the receiver, but the receiver does share information back. And the one I'd like to talk about, the one thing for right now is this one right here. If this was a two, it's the VFR section right here. And what this stands for is valid frame rate. So this is essentially telling the receiver saying that I received 100 frames and out of 100 frames I got all 100 frames and sometimes it drops down to 90, 80, 70, 60. We don't really worry about it until it drops below 40. When it's in the 30s you'll start to get low VFR warnings. This is your link quality. Uh, there's also a lot of other things you could talk about. We have things with altitude, vertical speed, and we also talk about RPMs and GPS. So these are all sorts of different sensors, GPS units, our ESCs, airspeed sensors, things with RB units. These angles are for stabilized receivers. A lot of information that can be shared from your plane back to your transmitter. So you can keep tabs of your plane as you're flying your plane, which is absolutely exceptional. And with that, we are done with the receiver section. I do thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments.